Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today, well, today I was working on the project that I had cut and had prepared for this video. I was in my other shop finishing it out, and it was going to be a layered box where I just cut layers of wood. I could stack them together, glue them up, and it made a nice little box that you could put trinkets, keys, whatever in, just something you could set on a table, and, and that's actually what I was going to do with mine. But I made the fatal mistake of thinking I could pull off get, doing that in pine. And I made my walls a little thin. And so I was trying to smooth them out. And I thought I'd speed up the process and use my hand planer. And this happened. So that project's now destroyed, and I know I've been a little behind getting something out this week. It's been about 20 degrees, 25 degrees out here in my shop, and I'm kind of weaning when it comes to cold. It's at least in its 40 today, 40s today, so, and I hope it stays that way for a few days. So I'll reapproach the box project. I mean, I've learned my lesson about it. I mean, I couldn't go that thin on the walls. I'll probably do it out of either MDF or more than likely a hardwood. I'm thinking oak because it would sand out and finish out real nice and be something you'd be happy to have out on a table. So I'll reapproach that later down the road and reprogram it and try that one again. And but don't fret. I mean, I'm going to. My next project that I'm going to try to release, I've been programming on it for, it took me uh, four or five tries because it, it's a lot more intricate. It's in 3D and I'm hoping it really comes out. And uh, I'm going to try to cut it this evening. I've got another, a couple other things I've got to do first. And so today I thought I'd answer a couple of questions. And I mean, they're not huge things obviously to me because I'm doing it all the time, but we'll try to address them. Okay, so the first question that I'm just going to hit real quick, and I've got to change this bit anyway, is uh, somebody was asking me how hard it is to change these bits out because they noticed that they're different sizes and how do I pull that off when I change them out and I'm going to a little bitty bit and a, a bigger bit. So I'll just show you real quick. So you get in here with a couple of wrenches, and I get it, and it doesn't take just a ton of pressure. And so right there, I've got my bit. Now, here's how it's holding different size bits. It was using a 1 8 inch end mill. I'm fixing to go to a half inch, 90 degree uh, V bit right here. It's got a quarter inch uh, shaft on it. So this thing right here in the center, these deals right here, these are removable. So it comes out, and you can see it has just a little bitty hole in it. That's called a collette. So I've got a whole bunch of these collettes for all different sizes. So here's one that's quarter inch. So this will be the one that I'm putting back in there. So I just put it in. It snaps in there. I take my 90 degree V bit. Slide it into my desired depth that I want it to be. I mean, you can... You can snug it right down to the top. I usually leave it about a quarter inch out. Sometimes a little more if I plan on going deeper on stuff. So then you simply just screw that dude back on there and tighten her up. So that's ready to go. So these little collets, they're fairly inexpensive. I mean, they're just a metal with all sorts of slits in it. So it's kind of springy. You can squeeze it together. That's how it squeezes in there, stays in there. And it squeezes the collet together as it's tightening up that bolt. And it just makes it real tight around the bit so the bit's held secure. Uh, I'll leave a link for these on the, down in the description box. I got like 20 of them. And I can do just all different sizes of stuff. I think up to 3 quarter inch. And that's the size of the shaft. 
they're, they're not that much, but they are necessary. They're something that you have to have if you're building one of these machines. A collet's always being used. So the next thing I was going to cover is how do I zero a machine every time? I mean, it, because you have to zero your machine to whatever thickness of material you're using every time. And I don't use limit switches. So basically, it all starts whenever you're doing your programming, which I'll go to now. Okay, so when I'm started over here in my Aspire or Vcarvia one, I'm going to create a new file. You come in here and I've set my size. And right here it says Z0 position. You'll see on mine it says material surface or machine bed. So that means you can either start at the top of your piece of wood or down at the bottom. The next one is XM datum position. That's your start position where your machine is going to call home. Right here, lower left corner, is the norm, which means you would start right down here. That's a pretty common place for people to do it. I learned long ago I like starting in the center of the material, right out here in the middle, simply because I hit some clamps whenever it was returning home. I had my clamps up on the side and it came right down the side and hit two or three clamps. So that's where uh, the zeroing process begins, is right here on this. And so once I've got my zero position set, I just hit OK. So right here is going to be where my machine, if it were running, it would go to here. So the next step, I'd get my material I'm cutting my project on. And I know this is 24 by 24. So I just come out here and find center on my material. And I'll just make me a little bitty X. Okay, so I haven't made my little X in the center. I get my material and I just square it up to one of my cross slats. Because I know my table is square. And whatever I cut on here, if I line this up with one of these cross slats, it will keep this square. So then I just come in and I clamp it down wherever I need to clamp it. I mean, I'm obviously going to clamp it up here close to the corners. Okay, so I'm going to run back here to my computer. And right here is a control panel that will run my machine. So I'm going to get on the Z axis right down here at the bottom, that red Z. And I apologize for the glare on this. But as you can see, when I hit up or down on it, it moves my router bit down to the wood. So what I'm doing from there is I'm going to hit the Y button here, and I'm going to move out, move up to the X. And I'm going to hit X, and I'm going to get it over it. And then I just go down and touch that X, and I want that to be it just touching the wood just like that so now we come over here right up here are our coordinates it's where our machines located and this will actually handle a four axis machine you can see right here is another axis that's all zeroed out so right up here is what we're using it's X Y and Z so I want the X Y and Z zeroed out so that right there tells you that point that that's sitting is home. That's where it needs to be. So after I do that, I run back over here to my control panel and I raise the Z-axis up all an inch, inch and a half. Just to make sure I'm not making contact with the wood when I start the router up. Okay, so the last question I've got that I'm gonna answer today is uh, somebody was asking me about when I cut my material, my wood, how much room am I leaving for clamps uh, and just securing it and whatnot. So, like this is a 15 inch piece of wood and so basically at most what this is going to cover is probably 13 inches. I usually try to leave an inch on each end. That way I've got ample room on the corners to put my clamps and I don't have to worry about getting into them while it's cutting and sometimes even more. A lot of times if I have a piece that's cut that's three or four inches long I don't even worry about trimming it down until after I've got the project made just because basically it's a waste of time in case I screw it up well now I've spent all this time cutting the wood down, it messed up, can't use it anyway. So that's what I usually try to do is leave about an inch and sometimes an inch all the way around if I know I'm going to have to clamp on the sides. So 
that's basically how I size everything. So guys, that's about it. Like I said, I had something made and you saw it was kind of torn up. And like I said, I'll reapproach that one later down the road. And I'm going to try to make, like I said, another video this evening or early tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and cut my next thing that I've already got set up for video. And with that, guys, I'm going to get to it and see if I can get them cut today. So thanks for watching. If you guys haven't done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.